Today what we're going to do is talk about something that Deming thought was quite interesting and I think when you hear it you're also going to find it rather fascinating. It's the difference between information on one hand and knowledge on the other. What is the difference when I say information and what does it mean when I say knowledge? When we talk about information I'd like you to think about this. This is a dictionary and it has information in it. All it has are words and definitions. You really can't do that much with it, but it has a tremendous amount of information. We use information all the time. When we talk about information and when you're sitting in a group, you're always sharing this type of information. Let's take a look at some of the things that you can share. One of the things we often do is use anecdotes as information. I tell you my personal experiences. Now this might be something that's useful, it may be something that's not useful. If you listen to groups of people at a meeting, you'll find that anecdotes are used almost all the time. I bet you it makes up half of the information presented at meetings. Now the interesting thing about information that's given as anecdotes is that when we talk about anecdotes, we have a bias. Our mind remembers the extremes, when we're really, really busy, when we're really, really quiet. We'll always remember the terrible event. We won't remember the time, though, when we were doing just fine. So, anecdotes are a part of information. One of the things that's important is that people start talking about anecdotes is this uh, quotation. The plural of anecdote is not data. You really can't make decisions based just on anecdotes. They're useful for getting things started, but you can't rely on anecdotes. The second area that, that you can get information from are focus groups. Focus groups are when you bring people together and you get perceptions of what's going on. Again, you can't run things or you can't uh, implement things just based on focus groups. It gives you a perspective that might be helpful in forming plans, but it's not going to necessarily change the way your system works. The third thing is we rely on data. And aren't we inundated with data? We get tons of data. Well, let's take a look at the types of data that you might receive when you're trying to make decisions. One, past performance. You'll be inundated with information that occurred a month ago, three months ago, a year ago, two years ago. That's all interesting stuff, but is it able to predict what's going to happen in the future? It's interesting stuff, but is it something that will make a difference in how we can change our system? Perhaps some, but it's not important from the standpoint of how we will proceed just based on past performance. There could be so many variables as to why things happen that way that those variables could change. The other thing is we use experiments. Experiments are great for science. It's finding new knowledge. You have uh, a control group and you have a group that has the experiment with one variable. Again, you might learn something about it, but systems are much more complex. You can't control one variable. Benchmarking. Benchmarking is a way of going out and comparing yourself with other companies or other organizations. You find out they're doing really, really well and you're maybe not doing so well. And consequently you think, well, I can just copy them and then I'll be able to be just as good. Again, Deming was very, very tough on benchmarking. He didn't approve of it at all. He thought, well, it's wise to look at their processes because that might help you. But he felt there was big differences between groups and maybe the reason why that group is doing so well has nothing to do with how you would do so well. He was much more interested in continuing improvement. And finally, one of the things that's often used is percentages when you're getting data. As soon as you see a percentage in any type of data, be cautious. Just remember, those denominators can really uh, be quite small and consequently the percentage difference is quite large. So be careful when you're seeing percentages. So that's the type of information that you're going to receive. Now Deming would point out that by looking at all this information and such, you might learn a few things, but it's not the way to manage your system. The way you want to manage your system is to use knowledge. When Deming talked about knowledge, he used an example involving a rooster. What did he mean by talking about knowledge? When you talk about knowledge, it has two characteristics. It's different than information. The two characteristics are, one, that it's able to be predictive. We're going to be able to predict the future. If I know something, I know what the future is going to be. 
All right, for example, if I drop something, I know it's going to hit the floor. That's knowledge. Knowledge is different than information. I, information doesn't necessarily predict anything. Knowledge predicts. The other thing about knowledge is it's theory. Knowledge is only as good as your last example. It can be changed in a minute, and that's where Deming used the rooster. And he used the example of the rooster in the following way. This rooster had knowledge. The knowledge was that every time it would go out in the morning in the dark, it would go cock-a-doodle-doo. -doo. And when it did that, the next thing that happened was the sun came out. So every morning, the rooster would go out, cock-a-doodle-doo, -doo, the sun would go on. And so the rooster knew that if it cock a doodle doo the sun would come out. It had knowledge. Now, the interesting thing was, one day, the rooster didn't go out, and the sun came up. The rooster then realized that its theory was wrong. Its knowledge actually improved. Its theory was stopped and was able to develop a new theory. Well, I have no control over the sun. So it is with systems. We're able to predict, and we use a theory. We continue using that theory until we find things that happen that make us say we need to discard it, and then we develop a different theory that's probably more sophisticated and more applicable. That's what knowledge is. Now, as Deming talked about knowledge, and he looked at all the things that are going on in the system, he said some things that were rather scary. He said that the most important thing that you need to know about improving your system is unknown and unknowable. There's no data for it. What a profound statement. All we can do is theorize along and continually improve over time. And that's where he talked about using knowledge over time to improve things. And the thing that he developed was something called a PDSA cycle. And at this point, what I'm going to have is Ramon is going to talk to you about the PDSA cycle.